welcome to Tell Me Your Story. New paradigms for a new world. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and uh, let's see, i got to go over here. I knew I should have put this together before we started. I just didn't get organized, uh, and, and you know, it's going to be interesting because that's the subject of our program. What is your unique organization, organization style or organizational style uh, and uh, so forth? Are you fun, smart, classic? Are you organic? I'd like to think of myself as organic and carbon-based as opposed to some other thing there. Well, today's program, speaking of organization, uh, we're going to be focused on uh, how to uh, organize yourself, organize your way, organize your way, simple strategies for every personality. It's available on Amazon. It's available... I always like that one thing that I remember hearing. It's available everywhere. It's everywhere. And uh, it is because it's on Amazon. So it is everywhere. And I, the co-authors are sisters. Uh, and uh, they are Kelly and Katie. And uh, you're going to pronounce that last name for me so that I get it right from this point forward. But thanks for joining us. Mick Meneman. Mick Meneman. You can say it. You don't have to be afraid of it. Mick, I'm, well, I'm not afraid. I just want to make sure I get it right. <laughs> I want to show both of you Mick Meneman. Uh, yep, that, that's it. It's phonetic. It just looks like a lot of M's and N's. There you go. And we thank you both for taking the time to join us here on the program. And I will tell you that, uh, you know, that was a little spoofy. I don't, I don't get into this program unorganized. Uh, the universe asks the questions, and I'm just along for the ride. But I also like to have my uh, elements uh, all ready to go, and uh, we do have it, have them ready to go. Uh, uh, in regards to organize your way, which is, uh, we're going to talk about it from a lot of different perspectives. Now, when you two are talking about it from the context of the book, organize your way. Where are we talking exclusively about material things here? Well, yeah, mostly stuff, because that's what we have too much of in this first world of ours. We have way too much stuff. So yeah. we're all about organizing the stuff so that you can find what you need at a moment's notice so that you can be organized. Well, how did you get involved in this? What what happened in your life? I almost want to ask, so what trauma, what did your parents or your siblings do to you? What happened in school that traumatized you to where now you must focus on being organized? I traumatized my sister. Yeah, no. it was my trauma. I, I don't want to make sure Katie doesn't try to steal this from me. Um, <laughs> but I was forced, my bedroom was an addition to the house, so I had to walk through her bedroom to get to mine. And I always describe her bedroom as looking kind of like a war zone. I mean, there were, obviously I exaggerate, but it was just clothes strewn everywhere, probably like gross plates of food, those kind of things. Um, and then you'd open the door to my bedroom and it was like, you could hear like the angels singing and everything. There was a place, <laughs> everything in its place and my stuffed animals were lined up. My Barbies were probably like in position in the house. Like I... You know, I, it really soothed me to have everything organized. And I think I thought everyone should organize my way. And I tried for most of my life to get my sister to organize my way and I failed. And I think both, neither one of us wanted to admit being failures. And eventually after many, many years, decades probably of attempts, when she was first starting her family, we kind of came up with this idea that maybe she needed different solutions. I, I will give Katie credit for standing up for herself uh, from this bossy younger sister. And, uh, and that's really the kind of was the genesis of Pixies Did It. Wouldn't you say, Kate? Absolutely. Yeah. We finally just, and we, it, you know, we grew up immersed in uh, Myers-Briggs personality type. So we already knew a lot about our personality type differences. And so because of that, we used, uh, used what we knew already and applied it to organization and kind of with some more unique ways to organize for people like me. My sister's pretty classic, you know, normal, like whenever you read an organizational book, most likely it's been written by someone like her. So people like me are more rare and uh, to, to use a term that my uh, nine-year-old loves, rare um they uh were more rare so we need more rare unique ways to organize 
Well, I am the type of person who likes to be organized. I remember when I first started doing video editing, a good friend of mine, a videographer, uh, he said uh, the first rule of video editing, be sure to stay organized because if you don't, you are going to be hard pressed figuring out where things are. Well, I've been that way for, for decades. Uh, back in 94 when I got into computers, it probably wasn't until about 2000, 2001 that I created this template I have used for the past 22 years uh, on my computer in, in my uh, Windows Explorer window where you have your folders set up. And I have a folder and it's, uh, it's, it's got a double zero at the front so it always shows up at the top of the list of folders so I know where to find it. <clears throat> and then it says uh, a production template. Well, inside that folder, I have four folders, complete, actually five, complete, documents, sound effects, music, and voice. And then there is a, a, a template for the sessions I use in Adobe Audition, the, the recording software. Then there's a template in there for Word to create scripts, and it's set up for double spacing and all of this kind of stuff. I've been using that same template, as I said, for 22 years. Now that I'm in video editing, I'm using the exact same template, only this time I've added another folder called videos because some of these programs we have musicians on. And I will go to YouTube and I will find the, the proper <clears throat> uh, code and I'll go to a, a site where I can download the video and then I put it into the uh, YouTube video that we put up on our website, up on our channel on YouTube called Tell Me Your Story. And so that's how, uh, and, and of course, it allows anybody who knows how to use Adobe and session recording. If a client comes in and says, you know, you guys did a commercial for me seven years ago. I'm not kidding you. I have production going back 15, 20, maybe more years. Uh, I want to change the script or I want to change the music. Simple. We get the music. We put it in the music folder. Then we open the session. We slide it in. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Boom. Bing, bang, boom. Templates, uh, are those uh, things that um, you, um, uh, I, I, I mean, are there protocols? That's, that's sort of organizational as well. But what about that in the context but it, of it, But it templates? works for you, right? It works great for me, and I try right. to instill that in other people. Well, the, the thing is, when you love something like you do, obviously, you, of course, it's going to be organized, no matter what your type is, in a way. And it, in a certain way, it kind of gives us a little bit more inkling as to your personality type. But th the things that matter to us that we're dealing with every day are usually pretty organized. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we wouldn't be successful at dealing with them. So it's usually what we deal with is when people have some area of their lives that they don't deal with on an every basis and they postpone dealing with and postpone decisions. And then we're, we're asked to come in and help them fix it. And so what we usually do is find out what area of their life is organized and how did they organize it and use that to help us find the best way. Hmm. So it's kind of like people come up with their own templates and, right. them, and the successful ones, are the ones that we tell clients to figure out how to replicate in different aspects of their life. So there might be something about the template that is working for you that could work in another aspect of your life or another area of your home, like physical or your office, let's say. But um, yeah, I mean, everybody has templates that work and you just try to kind of repeat uh, and, and implement them in other areas. Well, I, I have to say that, um, well, you know what? I find that interesting, too, the phrases that we like to use. I have to say, no, I don't. I don't have to say that. Uh, <laughs> um, the, the concept of being organized obviously is subjective because everybody has their own organizational skills. Look, uh, I've got this sticky stuff on my keys. I'm throwing my keys against the wall. I know where they are now. They're stuck to the wall over there. All right, that may be somebody's form of organization. Or Seriously. We'll talk about yes, Velcro. Uh, Velcro. All right, that's just so they know like, what uh, you said about organization being subjective. Essentially, almost half of the population are what we call classics, and that's me, and that's usually organizers. And typically, what we argue and what you see in most uh, organizational books is that there isn't. It is not subjective. There is one way. 
that, you know, you look at like the Marie condos of the world and it's like, you have to declutter and be minimalist. And the thing is, is that not everybody is happy being a minimalist. They want to be organized. They want to find things, but they like being surrounded by tons of photos or more things and, and having more than a few pairs of scissors or keeping their scissors in one drawer doesn't work for them. So, you know, really it's quite, you know, revolutionary us saying there, there, it isn't, um, there isn't one way because usually that's what people say. And we say it is subjective. You know, what makes different people and different personality types happy, what they consider organized, what works for them is different depending on how their brain is wired. Um, and sure, you can change over time. We just say it's a little bit difficult to change. So just be aware of that, you know, know your strengths, know your weaknesses and know what's going to be hard for you to change. It doesn't mean it's impossible. Uh, plenty of people do it to make roommates and, and mates um, happy, but it is harder. And we tell people in this book, organize your way. What is hard for you, what is easy, and what systems or templates, like you said, tend to work for them. Yeah, it's, it is, uh, it, again, uh, that aspect of subjectiveness. But at the same time, I take a look at um, other people. I, I'm an observer as well because I'm an organizer. Uh, and I like to have things where I, I mean, you two may be familiar with this particular book. It, it's sort of kind of along the same lines as your book, Organize Your Way. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I um, was given a copy back in 1980 something, uh, sounding like the guy on uh, the Goldbergs. Um, and it was called Who Moved the Cheese? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. I didn't want to read it, but, you know, he made it mandatory. Okay, all right, I'll read it. And I read it. It wasn't that long. It didn't take that long. And I came back to him, and I gave him back the book. And I said, um, I want you to understand that I understand the concept of the book. And my problem, my issue is not with people moving the cheese. My problem is is with them not telling me where they moved it. You want to move it, fine, but tell me where you moved it to. That's all. That's all I ask. It's a simple ask, please. And he just laughed. Uh, but that's really the, my point is, is if you're going to move it, you know, uh, then leave a note or something or say something or send me a text or a voicemail or, or whatever, uh, you know, and then I, of course, might ask, why did you move it? I mean, I, I had a situation uh, in that same job at that same station at that in that period of time where my the, my boss at that time, he said, after we had done a lot of work in the in the studio, don't move that cabinet unless you get my permission. Well, this one day I was vacuuming and I needed to move the cabinet to to vacuum. And I didn't think it's a big deal because when I was done, I was going to move it back. Guess who shows up at the studio? and jumps all over me for moving the cabinet. And of course, I couldn't sleep for three days. And finally, at the third day, I, I called him. I said, you need to come out here. We need to talk because da, da 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 He came out. I explained. He was very, very apologetic. I says, I was vacuuming. I would have moved it back. Um, yeah, and, and that's one of those situations where I'm not going to get upset if you move the cheese. OK? Um, so what, why did he not want to move the cabinet? Uh, that's a good question. I never did find out, nor did I care. Uh, <laughs> but I let people do what they're going to do. Uh, I train people, for example, to to use the software and use the, the, the equipment here at the station or anyplace else to so that they can do what I do and hopefully move on into other things as well. Uh, because I don't want to hold on to that information. Uh, you know, I'm not a territorial person. Um, I didn't do video editing until really until July 2020 uh, and now I'm doing it all the time matter of fact I just finished uh, producing uh, 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 one of our programs uh, with a musician a harpist and I incorporated the videos from YouTube into that video and it was an interest it's an interesting pro and I keep it simple I don't I don't I'm not going crazy but again I'm keeping organized so um, when you are dealing with people, uh, you are dealing with, as you, you mentioned that test, the, the, the Briggs test. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. 
what in your uh, organize your way concept what are the personality types that you are dealing with are they the ones that i listed of organic and and classic and so forth yes all right so we... let's talk about those personality types in the context of this uh, of this test now i've heard of this test before i haven't i don't think i've taken it although i do believe i did go to your website and take it but i can't remember <laughs> i can't remember where i fell um let's talk about that uh, uh wherever you want to start with number one and then two and three and four uh to help people to get maybe they can get a glimpse into, into themselves as to the the personality type they are when it comes to organization well, I'll let Katie go, but the preface to the how we came to come up with our own pixie types from Myers-Briggs was really that Myers-Briggs had 16 personality types. And we, we really spent like 10 years like anthropologists in the concrete jungles of Manhattan, kind of like I always joke with like Jane Goodalls and uh, watching uh, humans and how they interact with their stuff. And we gave each of our clients a Myers-Briggs, so we knew their Myers-Briggs. And we saw similarities between some, um, some strengths and weaknesses, uh, the same personality type and habits and what worked and what didn't. And that's really how we came up with our system uh, systems over a decade. And what we also found was there wasn't really 16 full organizational styles. And that's when we kind of came up with the Pixies Did It quiz. And you can go on our website and take it, pixiesdidit.com. Uh, but we, what we found was there was it was kind of like you could split humanity into two sections first, pilers and filers. Uh, and then from there, um, you know, there's much more differentiation, but, uh, but really there's four overarching types. The filers are classics and funds, and then the pilers are organics and smarts. Um, and then if Katie, if you want to go through the, each one, like the classics, I can pipe in with. All right. The <laughs> and I can also tell you, I can also tell you that I am, a little bit of both of those because it's it's when the pile gets just so high that I will then go through and file. It either goes to the shredder or it goes into a file folder in a Do little you remember area. where the file is? Oh yeah. It's in okay. a file cabinet and they're alphabetical. Yeah. Well no, I mean it's I, I think that's more of a fun than you know than a, than an organic or a okay. or a smart um yeah the because you know because what I always love funds always say I'm both I'm both and I'm like oh then that means you're a fun. Right, because you are both. Like they, you guys can put stuff in a in a box and remember it's there, and um, but you still do like to have things out and around with you, especially when you're on working on something. Oh yeah, yeah. Whereas my sister, my favorite story about my sister and I working when we used to work in an office together. I think we lasted a year, <laughs> um, and uh, my mom was like, "Are you guys sure your relationship can stand sharing an office?" And, you know, <laughs> But I remember we were working on a file and I was like, where is it? She was like, it's in the filing cabinet. And I'm like, why is it in the filing cabinet? We're working on it. It should be out in the open. And I had a whole system for my files are like, you know, in a steeped, you know, thing so I could see them. And I had them in actual files so I could interact. I could move the cheese back into the filing cabinet and she would know where it was. So like sometimes that's what the cheese is. It's like you guys have to have some kind of, you know, conversation about what we say when the cheese, you know, to explain where the cheese is. But um, so anyway, classics are big filers. They are easy. They can do anything anyone's ever told them to do traditionally that makes sense, that makes things tidy and put away and clean there, you know, and. Uh, yeah, you clear off your desk and you put things in a filing cabinet, Kate. Yeah. What? Yeah, no, I'm like, no. I'm That's like, maybe I'm tidy. Sure. I don't know. But I usually don't. I just, I'm done. I turn, I mean, I remember once, I will forget to turn off the computer. And I had a job where I was yelled at all the time for not turning off the computer. And I was like, it's a big deal. I mean, now, you know, anyway. Uh, anyway, so like a, I, I think classics also are a place for everything and everything is place. Like we came yeah. up with that model. We invented file cabinets. Like yeah. anything you can think of is that is traditional of how you learn to organize, it's classics. And they make up almost 50% of the population. So that kind of gives you an idea of why we dominate um, and how and, and telling people how you should organize because we're obsessed and, with it and we make yeah. up a lot of people. Yeah, they're very obsessed with it. And I, um, Pilers, like me, who is a, a organic and then smarts, our filing cabinets are what I like to term mausoleums. It's where things go to die. The minute I put something in a filing cabinet, it might, it might it's just dead. And so now I don't even use a filing cabinet. I literally use file boxes 
in the basement because I'm never going to need them. I don't need access to them. It's just like, you know, taxes and stuff that I don't really know what to do with, but don't want to get rid of, you know, I don't need it in my life in a daily basis. So it's gone from my, you know, Speak, speaking of taxes, um, at one point I had, I think 15 or 20 years of back tax forms. And then of course I, and I already knew this actually, that you only have to keep, I believe it's like five to seven, seven years. Yeah, five to seven. Yeah. And now, uh, I, and, and by the way, I do not, I do not file my taxes electronically, but I will go to a place that I can do my taxes and then I will print the forms and mail them. <laughs> not, not necessarily because I'm worried about the hacking, because if I'm filling out my taxes on the computer on a website, I'm already being hacked. Okay. It's that I would rather print it out and mail it because I'm not in a big hurry to get my refund, which I usually, and it's usually small, no big deal. But, I have it also saved. I, I initially, when I do print it from the website, I print it as a PDF. So now I have a folder labeled taxes. And in that folder, I have the years. And in those folders, I have the forms that are fi filled out, completed. And I have my name and my spouse's, my partner's name on those forms. So that if we ever have to go back and produce them, we're good to go. I may scan in the W-2 forms or the, uh, yeah, the W-2 forms that we get uh, at the end of the year or whatever other forms there are. And then I put those in that particular year's folder. So I have them digitized. So I don't have hard copies anywhere, but I have multiple digital copies, not in the same place, please, folks. <laughs> it's not going to do you any good to do that if you keep them all in the same place and all of a sudden a fire rages through the flood or you uh, have somebody break into your house and steal all of your computer equipment. And by the way, to that end about uh, turning off the computer, I, I'm just like, really? Now, I have a laptop now, and every time I close the lid, it goes off. I don't have any choice. It shuts down. This was 30, this was 20 some years ago. So, oh, yeah. I, know, I know, I know, I remember. I remember people say, oh yeah, make sure you turn your computer off. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily, but now believe it or not, I have a PC at home that still has Windows XP on it. Uh, it's circa 2006. Uh, it's actually shut off right now. I, I don't turn it on much at all because now I use everything, I do my laptop, but I don't save anything on the laptop. It's all on a portable drive and multiple portable drives. So I have multiple copies. And to me, that's another area of staying organized. Uh, so uh, the, this aspect of staying organized, do we see that proliferate, organizational skills proliferate, corporations, governments, educational institutions, religious institutions, and so forth? Uh, or are the personality traits influencing the manner in which <laughs> these different institutions organize their I, definitely definitely like so um smarts are are pilers and a lot of times you'll see lawyers are this personality type they, they gravitate myers-briggs wise they gravitate towards the law and these guys are pi are like crazy pilers like just stacks and stacks and they have these filing folders that they can like literally kind of stack and see. I don't know if you've ever seen it. They're like accordion file folders. They, yeah. So anytime they're working on something, like if they're on a case, they have all these, you know, folders like out, out, um, outside of their file cabinets. And then their secretaries take care of it. You mm -hmm. know, like they're yeah. not, you know, their assistants take care of it. They don't have to deal with that whole filing thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's how that works. And so I definitely see that in, in um, that. So it's like a way, like I have, because I'm a piler, what I have is I have about 12 inboxes of all my most important files that I need to interact with on a daily basis. And I have them on a bookshelf that I don't have to look at all the time. Mm. But the minute I stop seeing that bookshelf, it ceases to exist. And now I have labels so that people know where my cheese is. Mm -hmm. You know, so now my husband can, you know, sometimes he can get to like one or two. He knows where things are, but he doesn't need to know the other ones, you know. Now, now the, the, the same personality traits in the material world, they would apply in the digital world, I would think, uh, because I have seen some people's desktops, whether mine's it's on a PC or a Mac. It's mine's insane. And, and I see files and folders all over the place. 
I put everything on the desktop, even though I know it's not good for the computer, because then I know I'll find it there. Well, there's that. I know because, you know, you go and you're like, oh, desktop, and then I can search and I'll find it. The great thing that I have like a superpower because of my piling organic habits is that mm-hmm. I can search for anything on the internet and usually find it. Like my sister will look, she'll be like, I don't know. And I'll just, I take the time and I find it. And so I'm really good at finding my files when I need them because of, you know, everything's so based on word stuff. And so sometimes it's hard. I, I'm not, a, I'm, you know, it's, I know sometimes I'm not going to be as successful in finding my files, but you know, the minute something I know I can't lose, I put it where I know it, where it is. Like I have that one file that, like you said, like I have, that's my desktop. I can find anything on my desktop in a yeah. second because of, I'm just looking for it using words. Whereas before you have a desktop and you'd have to look for the papers in there. But even then I knew where stuff was always yeah. because I'm visual. And so the thing about smarts, and organics is we're very visual people. And the same way that we need to see it to know where it is, that means that the minute it goes into a drawer or a, a filing cabinet, we don't see it. That's why it ceases to exist. That's why it's a mausoleum. And so um, <laughs> that's why we need to see it to believe it. You know, whereas my sister, like I remember telling her when I was, I just moved, I moved about a year ago and I told her how I got in my one bookshelf that I have to behind the television all nice because it was what I was looking at all the time. And it would annoy me to have it disorganized. My sister goes, I'm just thinking about what's next to you, like what's in the right off to your side. Mm. Like she's actually visualizing my clutter in the house so far away because she knows me so well and she's been traumatized by my mess her whole life. So she was just thinking about that. Whereas I can close the door on a messy room and it ceases to exist for me. I don't think about it. I don't wonder about it. It just doesn't there. Whereas my sister's thinking about her son's messy room. It's harder for her type to deal with other people's messes, you know, whereas I just shut the door and that's it. I'm done. Organize your way. Simple strategies for every personality, classic, organic, fun, smart. What's your personality organizing style? Well, you can go to their website and that's uh, Pixies Do It. Is that right? Did it. Pixies Did It. it. They did it. They've already done it. You come to your home and then you leave. You're like, oh my God, it's like Pixies came and fixed everything. Uh, uh, Well, I think this is very cool. And basically, uh, uh, they can help people organize their homes, uh, people like you and me, offices and uh, and lives according to their personality types. And of course, different people need different solutions. And of course, uh, they're available. Uh, PixiesDidIt.com is the website. You can find out about their hours, their locations, and all of that good stuff. Obviously, a lot of this is done remotely via Zoom or whatever other modality uh, that uh, we are um, interested in uh, putting up and so forth. Katie and Kelly uh, McManim. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> McManaman. Yes. <laughs> Katie and Kelly McManaman. I knew I, there's a there's a broadcaster in Phoenix, Arizona. His name is Pat McMahon. So I'll try to use that. McManaman, uh, the last right. name. And uh, basically, the book is available on Amazon. Uh, and, uh, of course, off through their website, we encourage you to uh, go there and hire them. <clears throat> and, um, um, you know, make your world a little more organized. I know that for me... Um, I happen to be occupying uh, a, I'm going to say it's a 10 foot by 20 foot space, interior, 10 Mm -hmm. by 20, Uh, has a drop down Murphy bed, okay, there's a sink and uh, there's a shower and a bath, uh, bathroom and a refrigerator and cupboard space for different things, clothing and what have you, and I not only want, I have to keep it organized. I have to make sure there's no clutter. Every morning when I get up, I have, a, I have this folding table, small folding table where I can put my laptop on and do my work. Every morning I fold it up and I put it up against the wall on the side of the Murphy bed. <clears throat> now the Murphy bed stays down because it's ridiculous to put it up and then bring it down and put it inside. It's ridiculous. But I really try to stay organized and it's really necessary uh, in that confined space. My studio is the same way. Uh, even though I do pile and then file. Uh, but one of my favorite things right now <clears throat> that I do, <clears throat> I have a shredder. And I have been going through my file cabinet, my literal file cabinet. And I'm going through those file folders. 
put that sucker through the shredder. I don't need, I do not need, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the telephone company that I had. I don't need my AT&T bills from 1997. Nope, you don't. I don't need my Verizon bills from 2015 even. Yeah. Or my electric bills. Now, that's the other beautiful thing about uh, the way I have things up and paperless with current bills. Absolutely. If I want them, I will print them. And again, I will print them as PDFs and I'll save them digitally. Yeah. Or if I'm, fi if I'm uh, let's say uh, I'm filing for a loan, I'm, I'm applying for a loan and they need statements from these different uh, uh, companies. That's what I do. I don't go searching through the file cabinet. I, I go to the website that I need the form from and I will find the statement and I'll print it as a PDF and then I'll put it in the email and I'll, and I'll send it. Then I create a folder and I'll label it what it is that I'm applying for, you know, car loan or something like that, 2022. And I put all of those forms in there so that I know what I submitted, including the application and all those things. Uh, now, I don't have folders within that because you don't really need them. Um, I mean, I could subdivide and so forth, but there comes a point at which, okay, I'm going to have a folder for each one of these. I don't need a folder for each one of these. You go with the easier solution. Get organic and think about a subfolder within a folder. I don't know, Katie, you tell me. Oh, God. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> like, I, I think I've just it's kind amazing of put you in a category, I just kind of centered over there, like that definitively put you there. Um, it's not well, that I'm, I'm, I'm actually now keeping tools and things in my in my file cabinets. As I empty them, I put my my working tools, you know, uh, screwdrivers and a socket set and this and that and the other, um, to keep them protected from the weather because the file cabinets are in the house. Uh, even though I still have toolboxes, but uh, I mean, because I'm going to get to a point where there are going to be some hard copy things that I don't want to get rid of, but they're going to take up a heck of a lot less room. So I'm going to get myself. A nice waterproof um, file box, plastic or what have you, file box. And I'm hoping to get to that stage one day soon uh, because right now I have two of those short, you know, they're only about, what, three feet high, two drawer file cabinets. And um, eventually I'm going to go through all four of those drawers, shred those things. And I even shred the folders, if, if, especially if they're worn. I mean, what, what, what's the point? And then I take that big bag of shredded stuff <laughs> and then I put it in the recycle bin and let the garbage men deal with it. Uh, I don't know what they do with it, but at least it's in the recycle bin. It is paper. Now, I have heard of people who have gone into people's shredded paper to try to reconfigure. Well, I don't have the strips. I have the cross cut. Yes. So, you know, one sheet of paper is now a thousand pieces, but you're now a thousand a, sheets of paper. You're not going to be in a spy show. They no, it's not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But it is amazing. Organizing. Why is, uh, this may sound like a simple question and a simple answer to this question, but I'm going to ask the two of you because you've written this book, Organize Your Way. Why is it important or, or maybe it isn't? I think it's because our generation has been traumatized by our elders having too much stuff and having to clean out their stuff when they die. So I think, you know, as a country, or at least, you know, people held on to things for way too long and there's just way too much stuff and they mount. I mean, people have storage, you know, storage wars exist because people have too much stuff and then they can't afford to keep that stuff and they put it in a storage thing and they can't afford that. I mean, I think it's it's just we we're making bigger and bigger houses to hold what like we don't need all this stuff and so I think it's really become a big deal because of that and uh, you know so yeah people just are overwhelmed by their stuff and what they do is they just stick it in the attic and stick it somewhere out of sight but you know it's time to get rid of this stuff you know and to organize it and then you know what you have it feels amazing when you get organized when you get when you go throw away stuff it's just so incredible. Katie and Kelly McMiniman are my guests here on the program. Tell me your story. Organize your way. Pixies Did It is the website, pixiesdidit.com. We encourage you to go to their website and get uh, more information about them and the work that they are doing. Uh, you know, you, wow. I just noticed something at the bottom of your website, and you don't see this this early in a new year. You've already got copyright 2022. Who? 
Who stays that up on their my website? My sister. <laughs> my website is so old. I get emails from web designers who want to bring me into the 21st century. That's how old my website is. Um, and you already have copyright 2022. <laughs> no, that's because I pay somebody to keep our website up to date monthly because I know my strengths and weaknesses, and mine is not uh, a website. So. So uh, I definitely delegate that. I mean, when we talk about strengths and weaknesses per personality type, you know, it isn't that you can't, every personality can't operate at a high level. It's just recognizing what you're good at, what you're not, and figuring out how to have systems that help you succeed. And that's really what we're doing, whether we're talking about people's physical stuff, how they manage their time, their calendars. You know, when Katie was going through the personality types, um, you know, something that people always bring up is your to-do list. And that doesn't work for every type. It, it really works for me. It's something, you know, I have like two to-do lists at any given time um, and I go through them and it helps me get things done. But someone like my sister um, and other personality types, funds um, and some smarts really don't need a to-do list because it's in their head. It's organized in their head. My brain is like, rah, until I write the to do So, you know, it's really about strengths and weaknesses and, and like I said, mine is not a website. So um, I, I, you know, give full credit to somebody else for doing that. Um, I think it's called social light. Well, but Kelly, Kelly makes sure that's taken care of because she know like that's, it's you know, whereas I'm just like, ah, you know, you and I are just like, well, whatever, you know, I mean, it's just what's amazing about personality type. And it's just really how your brain is structured. And so we just look for the easiest way to help you get organized and stay organized and, you know, and recognizing, you know, like I'm, I'm okay. I know who I am and I know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And I'm okay with that. And so, you know, you get to that point where. Well, I think that's go. important that we know our strengths and weaknesses. If somebody comes to me and says, Hey, could you do this? And I haven't even got a clue what this is that they're talking about. I'm saying, no, I, I, I have no experience in that area, but I may know someone who might. You know, or if you'll give me some time, I will learn how. Um, let me ask you a question again about organizing. Is, uh, uh, is there a bad way of organizing? You want to be organized. Yeah. But yeah. You're doing if, you it organize, if, I organize, if I organize the way my sister organizes, that's bad for me because I don't, I won't know where anything is. Whereas right now, like my, my bookshelf of inboxes would drive my sister crazy to have to look at on a daily basis, but I need it in the line of sight. So I'm reminded of where things are and, and, you know, I, I need it like that. And it's works for me because I can find my taxes. I can find my bills. I can find all the things that I need at a moment's notice. But going um, on to other things besides, you know, papers and filing, for example, Katie in her last house. I remember she converted uh, a coat closet to took off the door and basically just put up hooks, removed the rod because uh, organics like her and um, a lot of smarts have it just it's too much to hang your coat in a hanger. Not everybody, um, <laughs> but the coat hooks just work better. And so when you talk about is there a right way or wrong way, there really is a wrong way for her. If she has all coat closets and no hooks. She's gonna have a lot of coats hanging around her house yeah. on top of chairs, on top of furniture, on top of tables. It's just what's gonna happen. And you know, when, you, when you're talking about why is organization so important, it's, it's the end of the day, being organized is just about retrieval. So whenever you set up a system, you're just trying to make sure you can go back and retrieve it easily. And if you're putting your coat all over God's green earth in your house, you might be like, oh my God, I can't find my coat when you need it. Same with your yeah. keys or anything. So you're trying to set up systems that are easy for you to do your brain, your energy level when you come home so that you can easily find things. And that's really what every system is about, whether it's on your computer, whether it's physical paper, whether it's coats, whether it's keys, whether it's your clothing, you know, um, Katie's personality type sometimes has trouble folding clothes. Like a lot of times we come into an organics or a smarts house and, you know, they've got drawers with, you know, nothing in them and clothes everywhere. And I'm like, you just got to hang things. You got to buy matching hangers, a ton more of them, create more hanging space, put up more hooks and just use your drawers for underwear and socks or anything that, you know, just you can throw in there without much effort, you know, no Marie Kondo super folding craziness, just like throw it in there with a couple of different bins for separation. And, you know, so, so really kind of going with what works with 
what you know you'll do by nature. Um, you know, if, if, if people have listened to or watched this program on YouTube uh, for any length of time, uh, they hear um, the organizational aspects that I employ uh, on this program when uh, we just take a little pause to to inform them about the fact that they're listening to uh, both uh, Katie and Kelly McMinimum. Um, uh, and uh, I know that wasn't right, but I'm going to move on anyway. We'll come back to that. Uh, and um, uh, basically, this is Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World, giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. We're here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., 9 a.m. on Wednesdays for our special edition of Tell Me Your Story. And uh, we are podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, and iHeartRadio and Amazon Music. And we're on YouTube where you can watch these interviews. You can see just how organized Katie and Kelly are. Well, you kind of can because I think it's Katie who's blurred out the back. Of That's her. funny, huh? Oh, really? that, right? <laughs> That's very, very strategic. That's very important. Very strategic, yes. Very, very strategic. This is why this is why it exists in Zoom land. There's a reason why Zoom has the blurred background or any background you want for a reason because they absolutely. know we exist. Absolutely, absolutely. But well, uh, we st just st stay organized by telling people that uh, if you would like to uh, get any, uh, watch any of this on YouTube, it's a YouTube channel. Tell me your story. Look for the guy with the black hat. Uh, you can also listen to the live broadcasts or the programs that are carried live on this station by going to richarddugan.com and just click on the listen link. It's up in the upper right hand area of the website which is uh, going to be brought into the 21st century one day. I apologize for those who have trouble navigating it, but at least it's there. Uh, and uh, then, of course, if you'd like to support the work we're doing here on Tell Me Your Story, we'd greatly appreciate any financial support you can give us. Uh, when you go to PayPal, which is the source for which you're, where you're going to uh, transmit this, and we do that for your security as well as ours. When you go to send, they're going to ask you for an email address to who you're sending to. Well... Use the email address, richard at richarddugan.com. That's richard at richarddugan.com. And we also want you, ooh, this is going to be an interesting segue. We also want you to participate in the decade of perfect vision, the 2020s, where we want you to spend time going within and being quiet and still and calm and peaceful and listen to that still small voice. And you might even get some inspiration on how you, can get more organized on the inside because I would venture that a lot of us the files are just all over the place uh, and to that end I do want to talk about our intuition and how it plays a role in this process of organization but there I have to say that but I don't know about Steve Jobs and Apple products I only know about Windows products and what I do know is that uh, Bill Gates is not an organizational freak because Here's the deal. When you click on the Windows Word icon on your desktop to open up Word, and, you, and it, what it does is it pulls all of the necessary files, the bits and bytes, and compiles them on your screen so that you can now do your word processing. When you click the X or you go to File and you go to the bottom and you click Exit, it doesn't put things back where it found them because you have to defrag every so often, defragment your hard drive. And that has always driven me nuts. It's like, wait a minute. I was taught as a kid in kindergarten, when you're done playing with your toys, put them away. Why, if a computer is so sophisticated, they can't teach the computer to put the files back where it found them, okay? That being said, what about intuition? What about that aspect? Uh, is that Does that play a role or is all of this sort of instinctual? Well, I think there is a lot of instinctualness to organization, but what you hit upon is that everybody has like a natural instinct, but like what you're taught in kindergarten really seeps in. And usually what you're taught in kindergarten, like put your toys away, there's a place for everything and everything in its place. And that's a classic. That's you know, what I think should happen at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Everything should go away. You should have a clean desk um, or you put it in your cubby. And some of these things work um, for everybody. But uh, what I'd say is that you have to kind of look at what do you do that's instinctual to you and what were you taught? 
you know, and sometimes the things you were taught don't actually work for you. And you kind of have to work at un unthinking that they work for you. Um, like you, uh, most people are kind of taught they should have a to-do list. And the thing is that sometimes you don't really need it. You know, sometimes Katie says that she only uses a to-do list when she's really overwhelmed. And so a lot of times we're coaching people that maybe they don't need a to-do list and maybe it is a waste of time because they wake up knowing boom, 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 what they got to get done that day. Mm-hmm. Um, Katie, I don't know if you can speak to that since you're. Oh yeah, there. no, I, I, when, whenever, I mean, there are times when I need a to-do list just because there's too much going on and it, and I will forget things. And it might just also be a function of age. There is that definitely. But the minute I write, the minute I write something down on a to-do list, even like I type it on a, on a note, lit, new, you know, cause I actually, most of my to-do lists are in my note notes on my phone. Um, but the minute I do it, I never refer to that list again, but I, I actually know now everything will be done on that list. The minute I write it out, it just, it like becomes, you know, and I say this, I just recently traveled somewhere and um, I visualized putting my sweaters into my, I visualized it so well in my brain that I thought I had packed them, but I just thought about it and looked at them and then said, and then I, when I got there, I was like, oh, you're right. I did. I did. And I remembered I didn't pack them, <laughs> but I had visualized it. So in my, you know, anyway, I mean, yeah. you know, everything works, you know, we, we come up with ways, but one thing I wanted to say about kindergarten is that my sister and I got to go to Montessori kindergarten. And I don't know if anyone knows Montessori, but all of the materials are on shelves and trays. So they're contained, but they're visual. So my solutions really are what I learned in kindergarten. And I took what would really work with me in Montessori was that I put stuff back on shelves in trays, <laughs> in my inbox trays. And that's, you know, I didn't, co- I didn't reinvent the wheel, but I did come up with a solution that works for me. I know someone else who's a smart who she needs to have, she has like, she has like dividers in a box that's out, you know, it's like everyone comes up with their different, which is a lot like, you know, what, what attorneys have, the file folders that are standing up and, you know, separating. But the other thing with, you need the whole thing about clutter, too much stuff, when you started talking about that earlier, Katie, is that when you think about a Montessori shelf for children with the trays and the work out visual, there's also, when you take that tray out, there's an empty space. So yeah. you're not stacking things on top of things. It's not like, oh, this is asking a four-year-old to get something from under, you know, lift something up and take it off. So, you know, one of the things we always tell clients is, um, and you'll see in our book, Organize Your Way, it's that make your systems as close to one step as possible. I mean, sometimes something's a three-step process. There's nothing you can do about it. You know, getting things out of your fridge, you know, it needs to have a door. So that's the first step. Um, you grab something and you need to close the door. So it's three steps is all you can go there. But like, you know, something you use frequently, maybe you don't want to have in a drawer because that's going to add for, you know, two more steps and make it a five step process. Or, you know, like when I was talking earlier about the coat, um, goat hook versus hangers, I mean, hanging up your coat in a coat closet, is like a six, set, seven step process, whereas it's only three steps or if it's on a wall, just a hook like a coat rack, it's just a one step process of putting your coat up. So, you know, really making it as easy as you can um, by reducing the amount of steps, you know, like if you have trouble putting things clothes and clothes hampers, remove the lid. Like a lot of times, um, you know, that's a stopping block to people. So the solutions being organized aren't necessarily about changing, you know, who you are. I mean, yes, that can happen, but that's really tough. It's really about building systems that make it easy to stay organized and find things and put things away. And yeah. you know, the thing about decluttering is it's just easier to stay organized and find things when you have less. That's it. Yep. So if you like a lot of stuff, experience. it's fine, but just make sure you have homes for it and you keep processes pretty simple. Well, the command company is making a lot of money off of me because I'm using their hooks. Good. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. They're, where they're wonderful. <laughs> all over the walls. All over the walls. I've got one for my hat. One for the coat I'm wearing. Um, I've got, uh, and I've got one for my backpack that is got nothing in it, so it's not a heavy thing. So it works out. I mean, I've just got them. I've got them in the bathroom, in the kitchen, and again, this is a ten by twenty foot space. Mm-hmm. And if I have things hanging off of the wall. They're not on things. I don't have to put them inside anything. And especially if it's something that I use a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I'm, I'm really making use of every, every space I can. That's another thing. I consider myself and have been considered to be <clears throat> the master consolidator. If, uh, if we're packing for something, I don't want there to be 
any breathe if we put a small critter inside this box they would die of asphyxiation because there'd be no room for any oxygen that is how uh, uh, um, consolidating I am I want to fill every single space there should not be any wasted space when I uh, when we, we used to use floppy drives in our computers I hated that I was only putting one file on the drive I need to fill this thing it's got to be full before I put it away you know that was that was my perspective let me ask you about symmetry because uh, I'm a I'm a person who <clears throat> I'm not obsessive about it but I sure like it um, my my and unfortunately my teeth right now I've got a missing one over here uh, that, that broke out I'm waiting for the dentist to uh, to do his his thing and get me organized as far as that's concerned but uh, you know I got a left hand and I got a right hand okay I got symmetry all right I got a left foot and a right foot I got symmetry um, when organizing stuff um, Kelly in particular do you find yourself uh, in that uh, aspect of making sure that things are are balanced you know and 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 what happens there so you yeah. see <laughs> match, yes she does yeah. So, yeah my personality type is probably more obsessed with symmetry and actually sometimes we delve a little bit into decor with clients um and it's like i actually read things where they're like sometimes it's good not to have symmetry and i will think i'll walk into someone's home and i'll think well, I like their home. It's not too matchy matchy. Like I like something about it that's better than mine. And it's because they knew how to make something look great that isn't symmetrical. And that is possible. It's not my forte. It's not one of my yeah. strengths. And, but, you know, we, we talk about personality almost like left-handed, right-handed kind of touching on a little bit what you were saying with symmetry, but you, you are either left-handed or right-handed yeah. and with personality type, you know, I am right-handed and I'm classic. So I'm kind of obsessed with symmetry, but, you know, making things look good that are asymmetrical. And sometimes they look even better when they're asymmetrical. You know, that's like a left-handed thing for me. Um, but it is something I kind of study and have gotten better over time. Um, you know, you know I work more it's, not, it's not instinctual, you know, going. I'm trying to figure out my parents' organizational skills because my sister, uh, second youngest sister, uh, is ambidextrous. Uh, but she used her left hand most of the time. Well, the way the dining room table was set up, we had three on one side, three on the other, and the parents on the end. Why they put her next to me on my right, I will never know, instead of putting her on the end to my left. I don't know. Because I'm left-handed, so that I always sit on the left. I always sit on the end, on the left. <laughs> On, like I just go for it. It's like I feel more comfortable there because I know I'm not going to bump anybody. Are you left-handed? Yeah, I'm left. -handed. Oh, and Kay, uh, Kelly, are you right-handed? It has nothing to do with my personality type. There's tons of different types. Uh, yeah, I'm still right-handed. You're right-handed. Right now, you said one of you was younger and one is older, so that does not necessarily preclude the concept that you are twins. <laughs> Because one had to come yeah, out before totally the other. totally twins. Absolutely. I am definitely as old as she is. <laughs> People okay. always thought I was the older one. Because, <laughs> everyone's always thought my sister was older than me because she's much more put together and organized. <laughs> Which means she's she more experienced in the world. I don't always look organized, but I am. I know where everything is. It there might look go. messy, but it. I know where things are, and that means I'm organized. Isn't um, that what's in the, and and that's really what's important. I'm trying to figure out the personality type that thinks that thinks that it's okay to dump their ashtray or their little bag in their car out on the roadway. Uh, I've never I've never understood that. It's like you couldn't wait. You were just at the gas station, and they had a garbage can there. Because to me, that shows a lack of organization. I can't do that. I just, I can't because it's, it's not that it's wrong. It's illegal. No, no, I'm not. Everyone was raised well. <laughs> now, apparently some were raised by wolves, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or bad. And, and, and you know, and also it's sometimes just exhaustion at your wits end. You don't think about it when you're there and then you're like, I can't stand this. And then you just do it because you just can't take it anymore. All right. Well, so let's <laughs> drop that in there. We are into the second. We have just completed two years of this uh, very unique, very unusual uh, time in our history that uh, unless you're over 100 years of age, you've never experienced this before. Um, 
How have you seen that impact the organizational attributes or skills, both of yourselves, but of the people that you work with? Well, I would say it's actually something in our book, um, when we were writing Organize Your Way, I, I, one of the things I noticed with our clients was things got really disorganized when people had too many uses for one room. So a dining room that was like an office, plus where people like put their stuff when they came in. And then it would always just be like not used, ever used as a dining room. And they kind of wish they ate together as a family, but didn't. And, and so we'd always kind of come in and be like, well, okay, I, you can't sell like your eBay stuff in here and have it as your office and have family dinners and then have coats everywhere. So I was always trying to winnow people down to one, you know, uh, one use per room or as close to one as possible. And, but with COVID, it was like everybody was home and doing multiple roles. And so all of a sudden, multiple rooms took on, you know, your kid's bedroom was their bedroom, place where they did their homework and their classroom. Um, yeah. And so I think that became kind of difficult. And I think eventually, if life ever kind of returns to normal, like before the pandemic, you'll see people having the clutter of the dual use that they had to buy to convert all these rooms to, to serve multiple purposes. I think that's the, the main one um, I've seen. And Katie, what, anything on your end? Oh, I think too, I think, you know how, we remember how rooms used to be compartmentalized back in the olden days, like in the <laughs> And now we have like, everyone wants the big great room, you know, the kitchen's connected to the dining room, connected to the living room, everything's all one room. Like, I think that, I think that these kids that grew up in that are going to change stuff. So like going forward, you know, this, this generation that's coming of age in, in during COVID times is going to have lots of little rooms in their house. They're going to be reconverting all those great rooms back into to separate rooms, putting up doors where there were none before, you know, like, I don't know. That's I think I, I'm going to move into <laughs> one of those giant uh, banquet rooms that they have like at the Regency or the Hyatt or what have you, where they have the, 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 the portable walls that pull out of the existing wall and they can crisscross and, and make smaller rooms. I think that would be ideal. You know, have a bunch of those, you know, and then you can create them and then you can yeah. go back to the big room yeah. if you want, you houses know, have those. They're called po obviously we have pocket doors, but they used to have big pocket doors. Yeah. Off between and even not even necessarily in grand homes. Our, our grandparents home had a sliding wood door between the dining room and the living room. Oh. Uh, right. And yeah. It was, it was amazing to us. It was like, yeah. Oh, um, so I used to be in, in a four bedroom house. So this wasn't any, you know, great shakes. And, um, you know, so I think you'd have more of that, you know, where you could really separate things for, for sure. I yeah. love pocket doors. I just think they're the coolest thing because they're space savers too. Mm -hmm. They really are. Yeah. Um, and when you have a, a hinged door, especially to the outside, because uh, you can still have a pocket door as a, an entrance and exit way. Um, when you open a, a hinged door, you're letting all the cold air out or in or what have you. Whereas with a pocket door, you slide it and then you slide it back and it's not acting like a big uh, fan, uh, you know, fan blade pulling in or pushing out. Um, you know, whatever it is that you've got in your, in your dwelling, but yeah. pocket doors are just, they are just so cool. And, uh, uh, you, you don't see too many of them. Uh, although I guess they're, they're starting to be utilized more, but they're just really, I think they're a very cool invention and I think it can keep things even more organized. Uh, and I don't think it would be that hard to install them. Although you probably couldn't put a pocket door into an existing wall. You probably have to put it on the outside and it would still be sliding, you know. That's why I think those barn doors get made a big, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Everyone yeah. loves those sliding barn doors. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a modern version. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, from an organizational standpoint, um, uh, looking forward in time, uh, what is uh, what is next on the hit parade for K&K &K McMenim? McMenamin. McMenamin. Mc, I apologize. That's okay. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> McMenamin. It's the McMenamin twins, K and K. And uh, we. Uh, <laughs> so what is on the horizon for you? It took um, in uh, having, uh, you know, the mayor of Eastwood won all this Golden Globes or won the, I forgot what it won, but it just won. And having Kate Winslet be able to say McMenamin because that was the last name of the murder victim in Mayor of Easttown. And so it was very exciting to finally hear our name pronounced properly. 
<laughs> by someone on television. By the way, I've seen that series. So uh, you should be able to say McMenamin. I should, I should, but I must have missed the murder. You uh, missed the murder victim, yeah. I missed the murder victim, uh, but I'm just watching the one guy who was a former cop, who's sort of the lead in there, and uh, uh, just uh, the struggles he goes through. He says, you don't want to do this, you really don't, and they do it anyway, and he's, I told you you didn't want to do this. Now look what I've got to go fix. You know, he's yeah. like the fixer. It's really cool. McMenamin. K and K McMenamin, Kelly and Katie McMenamin are our guests. What is on the future? What is on the horizon for the two of you um, when it comes to organizing? Because it just seems to me like uh, when you uh, are there any lessons to be learned from nature when it comes to uh, maybe perfecting or or fine tuning our um, organizational skills, regardless of personality type. Well, I, I always think about it like, you know how water always finds a way <laughs> to, you know, come through. Um, I think, you know, your own nature is always going to find a way to come through. Um, and, you know, you can dam it up, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it kind of comes through. And I think if you think of, if you think about yourself as that, just naturally the way you are, you realize that, yes, you can change or you could just kind of go with the flow figure out who you are, um, read our book, organize your way. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, you can actually go on our website as well um, and take the pixie quiz to figure out who you are. And, and then from there, set up systems that work with you uh, rather than, you know, trying to force you to go a different direction. And, you know, we always say that life isn't always easy, but it should be organizing. It should be. And um, that's really the philosophy which we try to give our clients, whether it's in person, whether we're doing coaching online, and um, yeah, just remember that, right? And organization is all about retrieval. Um, Always, yeah. You can find it, you're organized. Yeah. In, one, in, well, under, in under one minute. <laughs> well, I'll argue about what things should look like yeah. <laughs> and how they should be set up. But if you can find things um, and other people can interact with it, uh, then you're organized. I think the one thing that I do not like about some websites is they're not organized. I mean, they make you jump around and go through so many hoops and do this and that and the other thing. And it's like, really? I don't even know where I was, let alone where I am now. <clears throat> I'm just going to close the browser and I'm going to start over and I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, I mean, my website is pretty, uh, it's simple. Yes, it's archaic. <clears throat> I admit that uh, because I'm the webmaster. And I, I learned HTML. Well, I learned a little. And uh, I, I guess, uh, as some would say, I learned just enough to get myself in trouble. Um, and I know that there are websites like WordPress and all of that stuff that make it simple. It's like, okay, I just need to find the time. And eventually I will. <laughs> I will find they, the time. They don't, it's not simple because a lot of them are like Bill Gates. It doesn't always make sense. And yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. And if you're not, if you're an intuitive learner, then it's very hard. Yeah. Well, the, the website I have right now, I've been using a program called Dreamweaver. I don't even know if they make that anymore. So I'm using a very old piece of software, but it still works. It still works. Yeah. You know, this has been very interesting, very uh, informative, educational, uh, entertaining, a lot of fun. <clears throat> and uh, we are so grateful for the two of you uh, getting yourselves organized. It took us a little while to put this together, didn't it? It took us uh, 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 about a month to <laughs> get all, all our schedules organized, organized, mm -hmm. um, so that we could get together here and talk about the whole aspect of organize your way. And we hope that you folks will pick up a copy. We're going to be linked to their website. You know that because I tell you that every time because, well, that's what I do. I put the link in there uh, when I put up the SoundCloud file. Organize your way, simple strategies for every personality. It's available on Amazon. You can go through their website. We hope that you will do that. Katie and Kelly McManaman, we are very excited that you are with us. And uh, I am going to ask the three of you the three questions. We, we, we move to our lightning round of our game show <clears throat> uh, here in just a moment. Uh, you may have addressed it a little bit uh, throughout the program, but I like to ask them directly and I'll switch off back and forth so that each of you will have an opportunity to think about your answer while the other one answers. But before I do that, I need to let you, the listener and viewer, know that you're listening and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World as we're giving you choices and knowledge of those choices. 
to help make your dreams come true. We are here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., Wednesdays at 9 a.m. for our special edition of Tell Me Your Story. We stream live at those times at richarddugan.com. The podcasts are on richarddugan.com, as well as SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, as well as iHeart and Amazon Music and many other sites, too numerous to mention. We are on, as I mentioned earlier, we are also on YouTube, and just look for the channel, tell me your story, look for the guy with the black hat, and uh, listen to and watch these interviews. I hope that you will subscribe as well. We're up to a whopping 55 subscribers in a year and a half. Hey, I, all I know is that I got a lot more listeners or viewers than 55. Uh, so if you want to subscribe, great, whether it's the podcast or the video cast. And 62,200 listens in a little over, and I say a little over because we're in the middle of January, a little over four years. In the first 12 months, uh, the first three years, we had 30,000 listeners. In just 12 months to date, 32, 33,000 listeners. So, you know, you do the math. It's amazing. Thank you so much for your participation. And if you'd like to support the work that we are doing, we have a PayPal account for your security as well as ours. Put in the name, uh, or email address of Richard at RichardDugan.com. That's Richard at RichardDugan.com. Uh, for whatever amount, we'll take energetic support. Just send it our way. We will put it to good use, I promise you. And participate in the decade of perfect vision, the 2020s. Spend some time going within. Maybe it'll help you to get a little more organized than you are. Uh, it you know, there's always room for improvement. And uh, the ladies here, Katie and Kelly, they are here to help you. Katie and Kelly McManaman. And uh, now we're going to go to our lightning round of our game show called Tell Me Your Story, where we ask these three questions of our guest. And um, you just answer whatever comes to your mind first. And the first one to get the question is, Katie, who is Katie McManaman? Oh, I am a writer and organizer, <laughs> mother of three, <laughs> and uh, sister of two. <laughs> I almost forgot my brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Kelly, who is Kelly McManaman? Writer, organizer, analyst, mom, mom of three boys, wife, daughter, sister totally uh, my husband out there and yeah. best friend i think right and I'm, I'm a really good friend my my name in gaelic uh my formal name means girlfriend <laughs> so oh I, well I, I, that is lovely 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 i thank you so much for sharing that with us <laughs> uh i i i would have an irish background but you know <laughs> okay so kelly mm -hmm. what is it that you hope to or want to achieve through the work that you are doing now I want people to feel empowered to be themselves. And I think a lot of, because 50% of the population are, are me and I tell people, you know, I, people like me tell them they should be a certain way. I want people to feel empowered to do things their way. Um, and that's kind of the way that we love the name of the book, Organize Your Way, is that it shouldn't be how somebody else tells you to do something or live your life. And um, especially with organizing, and, um, you know, even if something's really totally weird, you know, own it and be proud of it. I you know, remember Katie, sometimes when she really, really, really can't forget something, at least she did when she was younger, she would write it on the back of her hand and pen. And I thought that was cray cray. <laughs> and, um, and then once I saw Richard Branson uh, on MSNBC, I always tell the story because it's really what helped me understand my sister and how her brain was wired. He had done the same thing. And when he was teased about it by these anchors, no, it was a CNBC, not MSNBC. And um, when he was teased about it, he was like, it's my backup system. I was at a party last night. Somebody had a good idea. And I didn't have my notebook on me. And they're like, well, you should have used a cocktail napkin. He's like, I would lose a cocktail napkin. And he didn't laugh. He didn't make fun of himself. It was like he owned it. This was his backup system. And if he didn't own it, he's a really good BSer and he did not back down. And so for me, it's like, I want more people to have systems that work and even if they're crazy and not apologize for it and be like, yeah. sorry, it works for me. I'm not going to apologize. You know, I, I can find this information that somebody gave me because I didn't use somebody else's system to try to fit in. Really, I think that's what I hope, you know, people, you know, besides getting organized, take away from uh, our, our business and our book. So Katie, what is it that you hope or want to achieve through the work that you are doing now? Um, the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I mean, there's nothing, I mean, I, I've just, there's too many, it, we spend too long feeling bad about ourselves. You know, I feel like that's just such a, it's so, you know, 20th century to feel bad about yourself and feel like you have to better yourself and become somebody who's perfect. You know, we're just fine how we are. We just need to find the right fit. You know, you look for the right fit for a partner. You look for the right fit for an organizational solution that'll work for you, you know, and, and that's, that's it. I mean, it's just, too, I mean, sometimes I think just helping people like me who think they're not organized is, is you know, half the battle. So. And final question, uh, it goes to you, Katie, uh, we'll uh, put it this way. What is your life's purpose? Oh, my life purpose is to help people. Absolutely. That I doubt. So I'm really glad to be doing this work. And that's, you know, it always feels amazing, you know, at the end of the day to leave somebody's house looking better than I found it and to give them systems that hopefully will help them keep it up themselves. Um, and just, you know, and everything that I do, it's really, that makes me feel worthwhile. Like if I've been helpful. And uh, Kelly, what is your life's purpose? A little bit different, I, educating people. I'm a little <laughs> cliff so I can tell you about organizing. I can talk about free banking in Scotland in the 1600s. I can talk about central banking. Um, so, um, you know, the active union, uh, British history, European history, a little less on East Asian history, but, um, you know, uh, yes. So I'm an educator and this is part of, you know, me educating people. Well, fantastic. And of course, the, the, the whole aspect when you mentioned uh, your, your last name, Gaelic, um, I have an affinity for Ireland. I want to move there. Been there twice in the early 2000s. Uh, I spent a collective month in Ireland and love the people, love the country, and I want to live there and uh, do what I do from there, as well as travel all over the world, talking to people just like you uh, about uh, the work that you are doing to make this a better place for everybody. And uh, I know it's one person at a time, but hey, I'll, I'll, you know, I, there are 8 billion people, so uh, let's start. Here's number one. <laughs> and I thank you both for being with us here on the program. Thanks, Thanks for having us. It was great. You. And I thank you for listening to and watching Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World, as we are giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. And until our next broadcast, podcast, videocast, love to love.